Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm covering a bit of a different topic. This one is about, yeah, Victoria's Secret and lingerie. So what's the story here? Well, I follow the stock market and Victoria's Secret is getting absolutely crushed following the, uh, the announcement today that they are going to have to fire 160 managers to save $40 million. What a what could have led them to this terrible point in time? Well, let's find out. Okay, so apparently uh, this is coming in to the news cycle as well. There is a, a brand new documentary out, uh, and this is a Hulu documentary, Hulu's Victoria's Secret Angels and Demons. Now this documentary covers sort of the downfall of the previous uh, CEO of L Brands, which is the owner of Victoria's Secret. This is Les Wexner, right? And um, remember basically that he got hashtag me tooed um, after it, it came out that he was a, you know, a big, uh, well, let's just say he liked to fly on an airplane with a certain guy who may or may have not um, self-ended himself in prison and uh, you know he would like to go to islands with that guy so we can leave it at that um, but really um, you know what what happened uh, since then right so this guy ends up having to step down about two years ago um, after that uh, hashtag me also thing and let's just look at what happened in well at least the last year um so basically uh when this was happening the, let's let's look at this quote first okay at the time l brand's chief financial officer Stuart bergdorfer was selling this like this we think it's important to evolve the marketing of victoria's secret it was a very important part of the brand building of the business and was an important aspect of the brand and remarkable marketing achievement. Now he's talking about the angels, right? And this was the, them ending this f fashion show that they used to have. And then uh, last year they actually discontinued using the angels altogether. And we'll talk about that in a second. So you can see since then, um, that overall things have not been going swimmingly for Victoria's Secret. The stock is down to $26.80. Revenue, now this is interesting. These are year over year results. Um, revenue down 4.5%, but net income is down 53%. Diluted earnings per share is also down about 53%, and net profit margin down about 53%. Yikes. And the stock is down 37% in the last year. So it's not all the stock market. This is a lot of other stuff going on. Now, you might recall that in June 2021, Victoria's Secret decided to replace their angels with, you know, a politically, um, a political soccer person and a bunch of gender equity campaigners. Now, these aren't what you would think of as your typical models when you think of lingerie, for, for example. <laughs> but that's who they decided to go with. Now, originally, this was uh, sold as basically the dumbest brand strategy ever when people talked about it. They did say, yeah, these people are going to get woke and go broke. But look at this article. Uh, from BizPack Review, Victoria's Secret has chose, chosen going full work over earning a profit, succumbing to hypersensitivities on the left to embark on a major rebranding. Gone are the beautiful angels, supermodels who have long represented women's lingerie. And um, with the light, they've replaced them with the likes of angry feminist Megan Rapinoe. Because when you think of, you know, sexy lingerie, uh, this is what you think of, apparently. All right. Uh, even even the standard size 32B mannequins didn't make the cut. They I don't know what they did with the mannequins. Rip the mannequins. All right. 
Let's see, let's, let's show this. So the paper said the company has been scrutinized heavily in recent years for its owner's relationship with the, you know, late person, uh, Mr. Um, Jeff, that guy, uh, who apparently had the, you know, the younger people on the island with him. So let's let's look at the the tweets from from the time and what the assessment was of this. Uh, just some funny ones. I thought these were Victoria's Secret is finally attacking the male gaze. Yeah, uh, this one. All of the ugly chicks agreeing with Victoria's Secret new wokeness were the ones who didn't shop there because no one wanted to see them undressed. Dumbest brand strategy ever. <laughs> that one actually may be kind of on point, especially when he talks about those people not shopping there, right? These people who are being the loudest on Twitter about how, you know, brave, stunning and brave this was, apparently don't shop, uh, which is the reason why uh, uh, there hasn't been any money being made at Victoria's Secret over the last year. And this one, finally, go woke, go broke, underwear edition, short and simple and to the point, right? This was in response to their announcement about saying goodbye to all the angels. Now, originally, this was said to be just a, a skin-deep rebranding. And you look at this uh, article here, and they basically, that's what they said. That was the headline. And, and you could see that, you know, they had these people on their Instagram, Victoria's Secret did. And, and I think, you know, we can agree that these are still, uh, this is a diverse set of beautiful models right and i think if they had left it there they probably would have been fine or you know it certainly wouldn't have hurt them but a lot of people think they overshot the mark because they ended up going with this instead and i don't know if some of these people are the gender equity campaigners but i'm just gonna say that when women uh, are thinking to themselves, hey, I need to buy some underwear and I honestly don't know what underwear I should get. Um, I don't think that they think of gender equity campaigners or even um, radical feminist soccer players. That's not what comes to mind when women are thinking of lingerie. So I just don't get this. Imagine... Uh, Versace, imagine Ferrari, imagine Gucci, imagine Louis Vuitton, all right? These are luxury brands, right? These are aspirational brands. And that's essentially what Victoria's Secret is, was an aspirational and luxury brand. And those brands, uh, imagine if Ferrari said, hey, you know, our new uh, person who is going to be in all of our advertising is this, you know, homeless guy here. <laughs> $100 million guy who wants to buy a Ferrari isn't going to want to buy it more because of a picture of some homeless guy sitting in the car. A absolutely not, right? And it makes no sense. I mean, that's not who you're appealing to, right? You're not appealing to homeless people. You're not selling to homeless people. But even worse, uh, this doesn't sell to millionaires either because millionaires don't want to aspirationally think of themselves as potentially becoming homeless. This is not where they aspire to be. So they don't want to see a homeless person in a Ferrari. Again, it, it's the, the whole marketing. This was their new marketing. This was like the revolutionary new marketing they were going with. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So again, you know, seems reasonable. Maybe they overshot though. Well, but what are the analysts saying about this stock? Well, basically the analysts are ho-hum at this point. There's three, one that's bullish. Three that are, are somewhat bullish. Now, just keep in mind that the stock is down like most of the market is. And a lot of these people are probably just thinking the stock is oversold. So, of course, they're trying to buy low so they can sell high later on. But four of the analysts that cover Victoria's Secret are still completely indifferent. They're like, meh, I wouldn't put my money in it at this time. Basically... These people are looking for a catalyst, right? They want to see something um, interesting that tells them why they should why they should focus on this. Okay, so the analysts aren't too hot on this. Megan Rapinoe is not exactly an appealing person to many, and you know, at the end of the day, I, I just don't think I understand how you know deciding that you want a uh, polarizing person 
like this to be your campaign uh, ambassador, your brand ambassador. Remember that uh, sh she basically got famous for complaining about how poorly compensated the U.S. women's national soccer team was. And let's just say they didn't turn out a stellar performance in the 2020 Olympics. Now, a, a bronze medal is nothing to shake your head at, but uh, I mean, it's respectable, but obviously it's not the gold. I mean, third best, right? So, okay. Um, and let's also keep in mind that they picked a extremely polarizing person who was all about the fact that a certain orange man was extremely polarizing. And that's part of her claim to fame is how much she hated orange man because he's a polarizing political person while she also is a polarizing political person. Look, again, it, it boils down to go woke, go broke. And it is indeed the dumbest brand strategy ever. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this was just a different funny video that I thought I needed to cover this story. Uh, Victoria's Secret getting absolutely hammered today after the, the unveiling of this documentary on Hulu. And now their shares tumbling after having to fire 160 managers. So it's not looking good for them right now. I'm not saying they are broke, but dang, they're heading that way fast. Let's just say things aren't heading in the right direction for them right now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.